Welcome to Peter and Ruffy's Football Show, your daily fix of football chat on STV. The main talking points tonight, Anthony Stokes apologises for his tweet, but is there a future for the striker at Celtic? And fresh from Rangers win in the Petrofac Training Cup semi-final against St Mirren, Mark Warburton still being linked as a favourite for the Fulham manager's job. And we'll also look at the nominees for the Ballon d'Or, Messi, Neymar and Ronaldo no surprises there. Which one would you choose, Alan Ruff and Gordon Smith? A messy for me. Uh, I know Neymar's doing particularly well, but uh, Messi, although he's been not as scoring as many goals as what he was last year, I think uh, on his way back, I think uh, he just excites excites me more than Neymar does. He was out for two months, so you would say for the in terms of the year, he hasn't played the full year, but in the spell he was playing. I thought he was an outstanding player, better than Ronaldo. I'm surprised Suarez hasn't really come into it as well. I think he's had a terrific year too, uh, but I think I would go for Messi. Yeah, uh, yeah, I agree with you on that, Gordon, because uh, I think back home in uh, Uruguay, uh, they're about to unveil a statue of him. I mean, he's like a, he's like a god there, Ruffy. It's, mm-hmm. it's a statue on his own. He's not biting into anybody on it. It's just a, it's a solitary <laughs> statue, Ruffy. But mouth never, open, yeah. mouth open, <laughs> Don't know, but nevertheless, he is a fabulous player. I mean, he's as Gordon yeah. rightly points out that he's had a great season as well. Yeah, and uh, that's why we've been discussing. You know, a lot of people are saying the, the Messi moving on, which is a lot of money. But when you've got a player like that scoring goals, you know, pairs of ego. Well, do we do we really need Messi when we're scoring goals like that with A2, you know, and maybe try and recoup some money. But uh, we'll have to wait and see on that one. Yeah, uh, OK. Uh, we will be uh, giving you the results of our poll uh, a little later on in uh, the programme. We've been putting it out on Twitter. You can join us at Peter and Ruffy uh, on Twitter and give us your thoughts, facebook.com forward slash Peter and Ruffy, on who we think is going to win the uh, Ballon d'Or. Will it be Messi, Ronaldo or Neymar? Uh, let's cut to the chase at the weekend. End. Uh, Celtic back to winning ways after the European disappointment. A 3-1 win up at Inverness. The game did eventually get the go-ahead. Um, but even before a ball was kicked, Ruffy, uh, a bit of controversy. Uh, this is the tweet from <coughs> Anthony Stokes, which uh, you know set it all off. Um, buzzing to be brought all the way up to Inverness with the team to sit in the stands today. Lovely weather for it too. Clearly unhappy, frustrated. Mm-hmm. Hasn't really kicked a ball this season. Doesn't look to me as if he's in the plans of Ronnie Dyla long term. No, uh, you're right in everything you're saying. It's totally wrong what he did uh, and it he should pay the con- consequences but what I would throw out there was is it any worse than what Chris Commons did? And he didn't seem to be punished yeah. for his debacle in the Europa game. Uh, he was brought back into the fold. I think he actually played in the, the next game. Now, the difference in this whole scenario is they need Chris Commons, they don't need Anthony Stokes. Yeah, it's a very good point because uh, at the weekend as well, I think Diego Costa uh, threw his training top at... Uh uh, Jose Mourinho not that, not that the bib's going to hurt him in any way yeah. um, that's a good point that Ruffy makes there but I mean Anthony Stokes he, he hasn't he wasn't um, the first choice striker under Neil Lennon either he didn't pick him for no. a, a lot of Champions League games which tells you a lot Gordon yeah well as I'm saying I mean I'd forgotten he was actually there till I heard read about this tweet and uh, I know he was uh, on the bench on, on Thursday night didn't get a game then uh, some players were back in the squad so he's well out of favour because you've got injuries at Celtic too and yet uh, he still isn't making the top uh, 20 players, well 18 he was in the 20 that went up to Aberdeen, uh, to Inverness I should say and he's left on the bench uh, because he's not favoured and you know you've got other players have come in now they've got other midfield players coming through strikers so I think he is well down the line the only thing I didn't agree with Ryan Dyla is said do your talking on the park now you can't really say that to somebody who's not actually getting on the park. Yeah. You know, you, it, it, my my argument to that would be say, well, how can I do my talking on the park? You yeah. Know? Well, I have a bit of sympathy for Anthony Stokes and the fact that who cares about the tweet? I mean, people get you know upset about tweets now, and and what does it really matter? So I agree with you on that, Ruffy. Um, Here's the point. I, I think it's been a, a you know a four years unfulfilled at Celtic. You know, there's been flashes where you, you thought he was going to be the real deal. Um, could he be a, a loan deal? I mean, I, I think he's the type of player that, that might you know attract Hibs who are looking. We've already talked about Michael Higdon could be a target for them. Hibs will be looking for people in the January window, despite obviously their financial results. They're still in a good financial sound footing. They might be looking to somebody like that, or do you think Celtic will look and say? 
let's try and recoup the money and, and mm -hmm. sell them to a championship or a League One side down south? I, I think they'd want him completely off the books. You know, I think if he was if he was going to do anything with Celtic, he would have done it by now. You know, I think he'd have been on the part more, more, more game time. But that doesn't look as if it's happened. There's a window coming up. I'm sure. I know he was down in England for a wee while there. If he was to come available at the right price, I'm sure Celtic would prefer to to move him on than have him going away and coming back again. Because it doesn't look as if no. his attitude's going to change at all. The problem is putting him to a, a, another Premier League club. Here is that the wage wise, the wage golf would be huge. Yeah. Be a case of saying, well, Hibs would maybe say we'll pay this amount and Celtic have to pay the balance, so they're putting a player out on loan and, and still paying most of his wages. Yeah, they have That's done that though. They have had to do it. Yeah, most of the club. I mean, some of the English clubs do it. Even for players coming up to Scotland, they have to do that. Uh, just briefly, um, can you read anything into a win over Inverness at the weekend? Uh, Griffiths on the score sheet, uh, also Carlton Cole, mm -hmm. although it certainly won't be one that he'll remember. No, that's an, <laughs> on, that's an on goal. <laughs> yeah, do you think it's yeah. an on goal? Oh, it definitely is an on goal. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, that puts a dampener on the Cole uh, household for that one. Gordon's declared <laughs> it an on goal, so don't bother celebrating or releasing it on DVD. Uh, and the other one, which I, again, McGregor, um, mm. takes his chance in uh, Europe and also follows it up with a goal domestically. Yeah, and that's, that's another debate out there, you know, okay, they, they're saying, oh, trust in the young ones, you know, where was the young one, you know, a month ago? It was nowhere to be seen. Yeah. You know, yeah. he just would write out, I think he played in a couple of the, the games in the Europa and then he wasn't played for a year. You know, so what have they been doing with him during that year? Yeah. Well, he had a really good time down at Notts County. Then he managed to get a little mm -hmm. sniff at Celtic. Then he goes away again. Um, I, I, but again, I, listen, you know, after the disappointment of Ajax, suddenly you'll get that kind of spin as yeah. if, you know, they're developing young players. It's whether the young players can grasp the chance and, and stay in the team. Um, let's look at some of the other games. Of course, uh, you know, we worried about Partick Thistle, whether they were mm. going to have enough uh, goals. Look at the uh, scoreline there, Ruffy. It's pleasant reading for you. Kilmarnock 2, yeah. Partick Thistle 5, uh, Doolan with a double. Yeah, it seems to be if you're, if you're struggling to score goals, go down to Kilmarnock can you get a few. <laughs> 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 That's the way it seems to be this year. You know, they've done it many times. They've lost 4 nothing. So, and, and Gary Rock was right. He was very honest after the interview. You know, if you're conceding goals like that, you're never going to win any game. He said it was only one goal that he couldn't complain about and that was Robbie Muirhead's yeah. shot which, which was, was a screamer a screamer yeah. from 30 odd <laughs> yeah. yards but uh, the other ones he said were was bad defending I had to agree with him there I mean you think it's quite ironic we spoke about it on Saturday Peter that four of the five goals came from two players who were both ex commander players and uh, you know, d down there in their old, their old club and rattling in the goals. But yeah. Kilmarnock were poor defensively, without question. Uh, what about uh, the Jambos? Um, I, I find it a source of frustration, mm -hmm. Ruffy. Um, and no disrespect to Motherwell, but if Hearts' uh, uh, ambitions are to try and battle it with Aberdeen for second, forget about the first spot. Um, mm -hmm. You know, even Callum Patterson says you can't go to Motherwell and draw. No, but it just shows you how, how far they've come. You know, they've come up a division and everybody was saying, well, where would they be? We'd all be guessing whether they'd be bottom six, whether they'd be top six. I don't think any of us thought they were going to be second or third so quickly. And now they've set standards now and every time they go to places like Motherwell and don't get a win, we're looking at them and going, you know, maybe you're not as good as what you were, but where they are is... Superb. Yeah, and if Robbie Muirhead thought he was going to score goal of the weekend, uh, Osman So had something to say about it. That was a, an absolute belter as well, Gordon, it from was, 30 yards. It was a dipping shot, wasn't it? And uh, it just it dip, dipped over the keeper. It was more sort of central than Robbie, Robbie Muirhead. Robbie Muirhead was one that you think, well, it was further out, I think, than, <laughs> than, than So was. So I think I think I would just put Muirhead ahead. I thought, uh, I thought Muirhead's actually gathered pace. Uh -huh. As it got near the goal, yeah. it seemed to pick up pace. Fly a bit. Know, flew in, but I would say that was just ahead of it. But So's goal was would have been st mm. stunning, nevertheless, and, and would have been probably the goal of the day if that had been from your head's goal. Yeah, uh, Rangers in action uh, this week as well. We're going to talk about that in the next part of the programme. And of course, Mark Warburton has been speaking ahead of their match in midweek. Um, of the other results there, Aberdeen, uh, well, yeah. You know, we thought there might have been a shock when Ross County uh, took the lead up there at Pataudry, but uh, Aberdeen get the win, uh, albeit it's now only seven points between themselves and Celtic. Yeah, but I still think Ross County had chances. Uh, the Aberdeen goalkeeper had a couple of good saves. Uh, Ross County had a couple of bad misses. 
Uh, but we're talking about Robin Muirhead's goal. What about the wee boy Hayes? I mean, I said, have you ever had a cross into the goal that's went in the net and you've you've walked away as if you meant it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, <laughs> absolutely. And, and by the way, Robbie, Phil, <laughs> Phil Mars to Johnny I Hayes, mean, who, you know, just put your hand up and go, yeah, I meant I it. I meant that, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> um, OK, uh, Aberdeen get the win. Um, no point in talking about uh, title aspirations for the Dons. They've had a sticky patch already. Um, we will talk uh, Rangers and their midweek match. We'll also look at the Championship, League One and League Two and England as well. Welcome back to Peter and Ruffy's football show. Alan Ruff is alongside me, Peter Martin, our bitroom guest. As ever on a Monday, uh, Gordon Smith is here with us to look back over the weekend's football and, of course, some of the emerging stories today uh, from the newspapers and a little later on too. Um, OK, we've been talking about uh, some of the games over the weekend. Uh, what about Dundee United? Uh, you know, the, the bad run continues. Ruffy, you haven't tipped Hamilton Ackies for weeks now. They just keep uh, stepping up to the plate. I have to say, again, I only saw the highlights. I thought it was one-way traffic. Uh, Dundee United had chance after chance. Uh, McGovern had a couple of good saves. They should have had that game done and dusted. Yeah. Uh, but again, uh, failing in the last 15 minutes of a game is there for everybody to see. But they're, they're playing reasonable football. They're, they seem to be playing better than what they were. And uh, I don't know about you, if you saw uh, it, I thought, I thought I they should have won at least. Do you, know, do, anyway. do you know what it's summing up? No, it looked like to me, it looked like relegation form. Relegation <laughs> form is when you're actually playing well, yeah, playing no the way. opposition and getting beaten. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. I mean, Billy Mackay scored the goal and he's probably the only player that's been scoring of late for them. And yet, he, he could also, have had a hat trick. It, maybe even four. Yeah. He, 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 won, he had a good shot, the keeper made a good save from, t- tipped it over. Then he was through twice, hit the one and one. Legs. Hit the keeper twice for them. And they were through another couple, other people were through as well. And then one player square across the goal for a yeah. tap in and he just took the wrong option. It was one, exactly, he could have played it to the, to the, the left, left yeah. and he played it to the right. And that yeah. was another great opportunity. It was three against one, wasn't it? The three yeah. players against one. So, I mean, yeah. I can imagine how mixed with Pat Lane must have felt after that game losing that when but it was so much. Much and talk. You can give Martin Cannon all the credit. This team just don't know when they're beaten. Yeah. yeah. You know, and that is the plus they've got to take out of that. And uh, when you get that kind of mentality and you come up against a team like that, you know you have to keep going for 90 minutes. It's interesting as well, Peter, as I say, I was checking up, and the next, the next four games that Dundee United have are against the four teams that are above them. So, I mean, you're talking about crucial games there. That, uh, it's obviously an opportunity for Dundee United to play against other teams who are not going great. But, by the same token, they become six-pointers then. Yeah. If they were to start losing to those mm-hmm. teams, those teams then will build the gap and it'll become very, very hard for Dundee United because I think someone <coughs> worked out the weekend, I think they've got the same points now as St Mirren had at this stage last season. Yeah, but I, I wonder if uh, Pongol and also DeMel and the additions that they'll bring in in January because they, Mew, will un- they will undoubtedly Muirhead will be back yeah. probably from Partick yep. and they'll undoubtedly start to, and they, to panic and yep. they still have got a few players out I mean Peyton's been out for a long long time Yeah. yeah. Uh, and obviously if they can get somebody to be up there with Mackay it, uh, I, I don't think it's the worst for them no but that's why the next four mm-hmm. games are key yeah. I think it'll be very interesting to just to see how they do in those games. I don't see Motherwell being involved in it, guys. I know you know sometimes you can look back at last season and say you know okay they had good players then and they they found themselves in the playoff. But I think you know I'm starting to see shoots of recovery from them and, and battling qualities. That that was a good point against Hearts at the weekend. Yeah, and, and Marvin Johnson for me looks yeah, every inch a good player. I agree. He looks a strong player, doesn't he? <clears throat> He's got a good left foot in him. Uh, could score goals and make goals. So I think the mother will, they'll take a big boost from that. They, I said they've got some hard games come up. They've got party away. Uh, on Saturday, which will be a tough game. I think then they've got Dundee, Celtic, and then Dundee United. So, but they all get difficult games. I mean, there's hardly anything between the teams in that part of the league. So, I think that Motherwell, as I say, they'll get a big lift from it because Hearts are a good side just now and, and taking a point there. I think they'll get a boost from that. Yep. Okay. And um, what about the Championship, guys? I mean, there's a story in uh, one of the uh, West London papers today, uh, just again quoting uh, Mark Warburton as one of the favourites for the Fulham job. Although, uh, you know, as each hour passes, Suddenly, Clarence Seedorf's name's in there mm-hmm. too. Yeah, I think I don't think there's any doubt that he's built his reputation. He's known in that part of the world, and uh, people have been looking at it and saying he's gone to Rangers. They're a team that w- were struggling, didn't do, uh, didn't play that great a football last season. He's got them in the cup final, albeit it's the Petrofac Cup. Not the top teams aren't in it, but nevertheless, uh, he's he's had a very successful season. One defeat so far and, and one draw. That, that's the worst of it. So I think that they'll be looking at it thinking 
teams down south knowing what he can do will be quite keen to get him, I think. Yeah, I would agree. I think uh, the work they did at Brentford was was good. You know, everybody was raving about him. Uh, again, it depends on the individual whether he sees uh, be down in England as the, the bigger fish. You know, and if Neil Lennon can give up Celtic to go to a Championship team, I'm sure the Rangers manager, given the circumstances are right, would have to think about it as well. Yeah, and a big chance this week, especially tomorrow night, Gordon, for them to uh, you know get back that little uh, game in the hand over Hibernian just to put a, a little bridge between them. Yes, it's a, a big game in that respect because you're right it, you know, Hibs have been on a marvellous run the beaten Rangers, there's a Rangers Hibs game coming up at the end of December, there's a few games before that though, but Rangers would obviously <coughs> want to have a league and into that Peter and I think you're right, they'll want to get the, pick up the points against them back <coughs> tomorrow night so that uh, you know they can just say well okay, it, it's been a great run by Hibs but Rangers are still three ahead. And the one thing I've noticed Ruffy uh, over the course of the last uh, few months is that uh, clubs may well uh, announce that they've got a, a small amount of debt but they've obviously managed to reduce their debt. Hibs fall into that line uh, with their financial figures. Uh, they, I think, lost something like 840000 in an operating loss but reduced mm -hmm. their debt by £2.6 million. Well run club. Uh, mm -hmm. I just wonder what kind of ambition they will have in January with this interesting battle that's going on between the two clubs. It will be interesting. Uh, I can't see them splash a lot of cash obviously if a particular player comes up for loan uh, I think they might go for that but uh, I think I think Alan Stubbs will be quietly confident that uh, his midfield and his strikers are now playing well and defence aren't losing as many goals Yeah. Do you think uh, one, two players where do you think? I think any manager would take two players if two players became available and uh, the manager fancied, fancied them and the, the board said yeah we can afford the wages I'm sure any decent manager would take them the more players you've got the better in the running. Yep, absolutely. Uh, we uh, had a poll on the uh, Ballon d'Or uh, to see who you thought um, will win the award. Uh, obviously the three nominees now uh, know they're in the running uh, and there it is. He'll pick up the FIFA Ballon d'Or this year. Uh, Messi, Ronaldo or Neymar and uh, again uh, so many people just uh, suggesting Messi's going to be there or thereabouts with Neymar. Interestingly uh, just ahead of Ronaldo. Does that surprise you, uh, Ruffy? I think it's because Neymar has been <coughs> playing and scoring goals, you know, at the highest <coughs> level. And I think he's now beginning to bed into that team. I think he's a really, really good player. He's an exciting player. It's taken him a wee while, you know, to get because we all saw what he did with the international, but now he looks, he looks fantastic. Yeah, I think that that's probably why Ronaldo has gone off a bit of late. There's no question that he's not been at his best. He's still getting goals now and again, but in the game that I've even watched him, he's not uh, as dominant a player as he's been. And I think it's mainly down to the fact that I don't think Real Madrid are playing as well as they were playing Peter. I think that's the problem. He's not getting a lot for his teammates. So I think he's been quieter. And in this little spell, the vote has come. Obviously, you've asked for the vote today. And it's always a case when people vote for the best player over a length of time. It's generally the current situation that is the most effective, isn't it? Yeah. And Neymar at the moment is playing better than Ronaldo is. And of course, let's not forget, only one of them's got a chance to go out and promote his movie right across the whole <laughs> of Europe. Um, mm. Just uh, interestingly enough, looking down south, all the talk was about one man at the weekend. I think, you know, this being a football show, you've got to sing the praises of uh, someone who scores 11 goals in 11 consecutive games and uh, Jamie Vardy um, deserves tremendous praise. Well, I think it's sensational. I really do because he, he's, I know that Leicester are up the top of the league, uh, but they're not a, a big club in any, by any means. He's put them up there to be fair, and, and he's got 11 and 11, he could still get 12 and 12. I mean, he's, he's, the record's not mm. done yet. And I've, what I've heard is, Peter, I have good authority that he's not playing fully fit either. You know, he's, he's, he wants to play, he's determined to play. His goal at the weekend was excellent against Man United, so I give him all the credit in the world. I think that's a great record. Yeah, absolutely. I just wonder how many goals Daniel Sturridge would score if he was willing to play not fully fit. Um, Robbie, mm -hmm. and here's a question for you, just from my allegiances and soft spot for Liverpool. Could they possibly get into that top four or e e even greater heights? Yeah, I think they could. Uh, I think he's got them playing as a proper team now rather than individuals. I think they, they look as if they're all working for each other. They, whatever he's doing, whatever he brings to a, a club, it's certainly working. And uh, all, the, the, basic, the basic thing for me is they all look as if they're enjoying it. 
Yep, I certainly read him as a manager. Yeah. Uh, it's been that long uh, that I've even thought of considering Liverpool as contenders for anything, Gordon. Absolutely, but it, 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 we've all seen it in <coughs> passing football. It's a chemical reaction between a group of players and a manager, and certain managers can get the best out of players, and he seems to be doing that already. And I think that if you're thinking top four possibility, I think definite chance of getting there. Yeah, have we um, changed our mind on who's going mm -hmm. to win the Barclays Premier League? No, I'm sticking with Man City, but I, I'd be really <coughs> interest in January to see what he brings into Liverpool because yeah. I think he, the Liverpool supporters are looking for something a wee bit special. Yeah. yeah well, I think Man City as well. Um, I don't see Leicester win it. I think that... Uh, Van Gaal say they could win it yeah. in the weekend. Was that just... Uh, um, he may well have said that, Robbie, but I don't think anybody was listening, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, what, you're not listening to him? <coughs> but everybody else listens. Yeah. <laughs> I certainly wouldn't watch his team. Uh, I'm with no. Paul Scholes on that. You might uh, beg to differ. It's all about opinions on this programme. Uh, don't forget, you can interact with us. It's always good to get a tweet, positive or negative. That seems to be the story of the weekend. Uh, thanks to Alan Ruff, thanks to Gordon Smith and to you for watching as we're back tomorrow at 6.30 again.